Right, let us look at your second part of the problem. The second part of the problem is name and state the principle that you can use to determine the height h. Now, remember what happens when once the arrow is inside your object, this object is going to move because the arrow has velocity. We also saw that the velocity of the object and the arrow at the bottom was 3,08 meters per second. So this object is now going to move to a certain height. Now whenever you move from one place to another, when you move from the bottom and you move to the top there, we have to look at mechanical energy. Now when can you use mechanical energy and what is mechanical energy? Mechanical energy of an object is simply the sum of the kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Now remember that when you're busy with mechanical energy, you're only going to be concerned about kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. No other energy plays a role. As soon as you have uh, energy because of air friction, we're not going to use conservation of mechanical energy. So we get mechanical energy only, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. We know from grade 10 already that kinetic energy K of an object, I'm going to use the symbol K. Now remember you can use various symbols. You can use EK or we can use K for kinetic energy. In the rest of the slides you will see I'll just refer to kinetic energy as K. Kinetic energy of an object is the energy it possesses by virtue of its state of motion. So anything that moves has kinetic energy. Potential energy, specifically gravitational potential energy. The symbol that I'm going to use in my presentation is going to be U. Remember, you can use GPE or you can use EP. But for convenience sake, I'm going to use just the single symbol, which is U. Of an object is the energy it possesses by virtue of its position in the gravitational field of the Earth. And basically what we're going to look at is how high is it from your reference point. Now remember your reference point could be the table, your reference point could be from the ground. How high is it from the table? How high is it from the ground? Conservation of mechanical energy. This is the concept that we're going to concern ourselves with. Now, conservation of mechanical energy is simply the total mechanical energy of an isolated system is conserved. Conserved mean it remains constant. This simply means that the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy of an isolated system remains constant. And here we see that we're not going to take any external forces. Isolated means that you're only going to look at the two objects. In our example, we've got the arrow and we've got the ball. So we're only going to look at the arrow and the ball. We're not going to look at any other forces. We're not going to look at energy from, from um, air friction. We're not going to look at somebody pushing. We're only looking at what is happening to the arrow and the ball. Important then, your mechanical energy, E mechanical, at the bottom will always be equal to E mechanical at the And in symbol form, we can say that
E-mechanical, which is poten gravitational potential energy, and K-kinetic energy at the bottom is equal to your gravitational energy at plus your kinetic energy at the top. Right, there was a one question or two questions that came through. The first question is, can energy be transformed to another state? Now, remember that energy is always transformed. You can't make energy out of nothing. It's always, it's always transferred from one form to another. For example, when the pen falls, then you've got gravitational potential energy. That gravitational potential energy, as the pen starts to move, the gravitational potential energy gets converted or transformed into kinetic energy. When the pen lands on the ground, then you have sound energy and you have heat energy. So there's always a transformation of energy from one form to another. You can't destroy the energy. The energy always gets transformed from one form to another. But for conservation of mechanical energy, we only look at gravitational potential energy and we look at kinetic energy. That is the conservation of mechanical energy because what we're keeping constant here is your mechanical energy. If we look at your slides now, so we're only looking at mechanical energy for this use conservation of mechanical energy if you have the following. Okay? If we just look, when can you use conservation of mechanical energy? Only when conservative forces are present, mechanical energy is conserved. Now, conservative forces Another word for conservative forces is non-contact forces. Non-contact forces is when there's no contact between the force and the object that is moving. You cannot use, or the example there, gravitational force. When an object falls, there's no contact between the earth, the center of the earth and the object. The object will simply fall. You cannot use conservation of mechanical energy if there are non-conservative forces. Now, non-conservative forces are contact forces. And contact forces is when there's contact between the object and the force. So if we, for example, air friction, when you use conservation of mechanical energy, there must not be air friction. As soon as there is air friction, you have to use something else, right? So you would use the work energy principle. You can't use conservation of mechanical energy. So make sure that when you read your problem, as soon as there's friction, don't use conservation of mechanical energy because then the mechanical energy is not conserved. Your energy that you have then at the top gets converted to kinetic energy and energy because of your air friction. So you can't use that, the work done by air friction. Okay, so important, they only use it when they are conservative forces. Easy to remember conservative forces, there's no contact between the object and the force. Remember that a force is a push or a pull. So if I push the calculator, I am touching the calculator. So that is contact, and that is known as a non-conservative force. If you leave the calculator, as soon as I leave it, then the calculator will fall on, on its own, and there's no contact between the earth pulling it and the actual object. So that is a very important thing that you need to remember. Don't use conservation of mechanical energy when there's air friction. A question also, is air friction the only friction possible? Now, the reason why I only used air friction is because when something falls, there's no contact 
um, with the ground. So the only thing that will make something go slower is the air pushing it up. You also get friction when you move an object across a surface. Then you've got friction from the ground. Okay, so there are other types of friction.